All right, now I have to stand behind the podium, so unfortunately that's what you're going to get. Um, a little bit about me, okay, because and I, when I prepared this, I wasn't sure exactly what they wanted, so I, I put a few things on, and I, I think it's maybe neat for you guys to know where I came from, but education was the family business. Um, it was a family business for my uncles, my dad. Um, this is a picture of me with my uh, four other siblings on my graduation day when I graduated high school. Um, interesting note um, with them, this is them 20 years later, all of them went into education. They're all teachers, all of their spouses went into education. My wife is the only black sheep of the family. <laughs> we decided to go into the medical field, which I'll talk about here in a minute. Um, but these were the people, you know, being the youngest of five, I looked up to them. Along with uh, this guy in the middle, there's my parents. My mom did home daycare for over 30 years. This is her retirement party. Um, so kind of neat. The guy in the middle, my dad, unfortunately passed away in 2015. He was a huge influence on me. He was someone who showed me that failure is okay. He never criticized us for failure. He thought we could learn through failure. Um, so that's a huge trait that I've taken um, as I kind of moved through my professional career. So um, I owe my mom and dad everything. They guided me down this road. Um, their support certainly has allowed me to get to where I'm at. Um, these are the people that mean the most to me. Um, that's my wife, Julia, who's a, who was going to attend today um, and then chose not to because she thought that they would bother me, which it wouldn't have. But she's a physical therapist at the Avera Outpatient um, Clinic here in Brandon. Um, our oldest, Griffin, currently uh, just entered fifth grade at the Intermediate School. It was a little scary for us, but she loves school. Uh, Layton is a second grader at Brandon Elementary. Talon is a four, soon to be five year old that went into the five year old preschool today at Building Block, so he was super pumped. Um, <laughs> but they all love school. Uh, we love to travel. So, this would be some stuff from this summer. Um, we really like to expose our kids to as much as possible, zip lining, whatever it is. Um, my oldest, Griffin, is an adrenaline junkie. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. <laughs> Loves roller coasters and things like that, so um, we try to travel as much as possible, and this is where they grow up. I mean, they are growing up at the schools. Um, so whether it's at the state football championship and they get to take a picture with the, the championship trophy, or whether it's at the spring musical when we fall in love with Ariel and we have to wear a costume to the musical, or um, Sebastian, which Talon thought he was really, really cool, um, and things like that. So they're all links. Um, this is our picture from the first day of school this year. Um, yeah. So on the right-hand side, there, there's a pup we added about a year and a half ago. Um, he's a sock eater. <laughs> We've had one surgery. We hope we don't have another. Um, but interesting story about that, we let our kids kind of name him. Okay? So names mold around. Griffin was set on Peaky Pie from My Little Pony. Um, but Layton and uh, Griffin, kind of, or Layton and uh, Talon kind of overcame and they named him Lynx. Okay? And then it was a couple days before I interviewed um, for the principal job at Brandon Valley High School. And uh, I was down tucking Layton in, and one of the things we do with our kids every night is we say, what was the best part of your day as you're tucking them in? Because we want them to go to bed thinking something positive. And so I, and she talks, and I don't even remember what that was, and then she goes, Dad, I have a question for you. I'm like, hmm, what, what, what gal, what? She goes, can dogs have middle names? <laughs> and I said, yeah. She goes, well, I think we should name Link's his middle name, Way. <laughs> so now I have a dog named Link's Way Schluckaway. <laughs> so I told my staff after I was named principal that I'm committed to at least 12 more years here. I can't go to a new district and tell my dog named Link's Way Schluckaway. <laughs> so we're committed. We're all in. Um, and as we alluded before, we're huge Coyote fans. So for the state fans in here, um, this is going to be our year. I promise we're going to break through. <laughs> and if not, we'll cry again. Um, Vision 2040, I guess what I wanted to share a little bit with you guys is we're already planning for the future, so I mean, we're anticipating growth and things that might come up and programs that we might need to consider. Um, so that doesn't happen overnight. Vision 2040 is a district-wide K-12 vision. Okay, Today I'm focusing just on the high school. Um, that document is on our uh, district website if you're ever interested to look at a lot of cool things in there that we're already putting in motion. I thought this was appropriate because we hope this is done by 2040. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so here's the deal, I have these people, I have these parents living in the plus and obviously he doesn't know I still control the person. <laughs> So I've been getting these calls from these 
parents in the bluff saying you're counting my kid tardy and they gotta go all the way around. And we do a Saturday school point system for tardy. So I told them I would come up with a solution. So I think on September 21st, I assigned Mayor Lumber to Saturday school. <laughs> and then on the 28th, I did Brian Reed. And then if we need to go out, Kim is, I got blame the chamber, so I'm gonna put her in the next one if we need to. Um, but in all seriousness, I just thought that would be kind of a funny way to start. And when this gets done, this will be amazing for us, and we'll be patient. And um, this is this year's freshman on Freshman Unity Day. Um, and this is why we do what we do, or this is why I do what I do. Um, so they're spelling out 2023, their grad year. Um, I think as we get bigger, the important thing that we have to consider as a community is how do we stay one? How do we stay links? Because that may become a little harder and harder as we grow. How we do that with senior retreat, okay? Where I had over half of the seniors volunteer a day that would help prepare them for this day, Freshman Unity Day. Where we have 350 some freshmen this year, 328 came to Freshman Unity Day and it's a voluntary day. That was led by over 100 seniors. Absolutely amazing. I wish you guys could all step in and see what that looks like, because it's unbelievable. This is our goal. Okay, what I'm going to challenge some of you in this room today is, yes, this is our goal, but I don't believe we're maximizing what we could be doing together, if that makes sense. Maybe we can give students different experiences moving forward, that when they reach this day, maybe they have a better idea of what they want to do in the future, and they've had some experiences prior to that. A little overview as of today, um, we have 1,223 students on campus at BVHS. We have another 22 students at our alternative site in Sioux Falls. So we're at about 1,250 enrollment, 9 through 12. Um, just want you to know we have a plan moving forward. There will be a time where um, we need to put an addition on the high school. Um, when we hit that 90% utilization trigger, um, we'll be begin conversations on an addition. Where that addition goes in the high school, we're not sure whether it's on the east side or the south. Um, West Corner, um, but we'll start to have those conversations. That's a multi-year plan uh, process. And Paul, we plan on utilizing capital outlay for most of the high school addition in the future. Yep. So just understand that when you hear about some bond stuff a little bit later on, the high school addition is something we will pay for right away. That we will not go out to bond on that. Um, the new addition would get us to 1,800 students. Um, we're going to continue to grow, but I believe that the growth will be um, after next year when we graduate 250 and bring in another 350. After that, we should just have steady growth. Um, and we have room right now. So if anyone tells you the high school's full, we're not full. We have capacity to, to increase, uh, to add teachers and things like that. Um, I want everyone in this room to understand that our committee last year, we want to maintain one high school in this community as long as possible. How are we gonna do that? I'll talk a little bit about utilizing innovation, innovative solutions to basically increase our capacity. What do we look like in 2040? Okay, this is our best guess, because we can't be exact. We anticipate we'll have about 2,200 students, nine through 12. We will be at our current site. Okay, that's going to be our goal. We don't plan on building a new high school or anything like that. Um, yes, we are landlocked, um, but we can be creative in what we do. How can we be creative? We envision in eight to ten years having a Valley Springs Career and Technical Education Academy. What would, this academy would house anything from students interested in going to health careers related fields. We'd have hospital rooms out there where they could get CNA certified and things like that. Um, we would have a culinary out there. We would have an auto body type stuff, building trades. This, this is kind of our big vision moving forward. Um, all high need areas, along with engineer type stuff. So we're really, some of you here, career and technical education. I'd be curious to know what pops in your head. Career and technical education is evolving. It's the health field. It's our engineers. So don't just think like that's shop class and that's going in and cooking. It's so much more than that. And the one thing that we want to do in the next couple of years is educate our community on what CTE really is. Because um, I think there's some misconceived notions out there what it is. Um, and we have a lot of other 
potential off-site things there. We'd also envision that our alternative high school setting would be located there. Right now our students go to Sioux Falls um, to Teach Well Solutions, which we kind of contract with them. At some point, it's gonna make more sense for us to house that out here, so that would be housed out at Valley Springs also. Um, my understanding is that would need to be a completely new building. So that's coming down the road at some point. I really, this is a phrase that kind of came out of a trip I took, but I really want to embrace the idea of a school without walls. And what I mean by that is, um, through our uh, strategic planning process, we came up with maybe some areas or opportunities for growth. And one of the opportunities for growth that at least stuck out to me is community engagement, and that's some of you in this room. So my goals, um, I want to incorporate and empower community business partner, partners into assisting us with college and career readiness for our students. I don't know what that looks like. <laughs> okay, That's why I'm pitching this to you guys. That's something I want to partner and come up with together. How can we make sure our students are college and career ready? And then I want to increase business internship and apprenticeship, apprenticeship opportunities district-wide. And that's where I think the chamber plays a key role for us. And, and understand, Kim and I have been working, what, eight months? Um, and we're finally ready to roll a few things out, but it's a process to get there. How do we do this? The chamber. I think they're going to be a big member. And one of the reasons I really was excited to talk today. Um, the school district, we prepare everyone for the future together. That includes this part here, a community. I think we're doing amazing things. I mean, what do they name our school district? The best school district in the state of South Dakota again. Um, our high school's been named by USA Today as the best high school in South Dakota. Is it Nish named the high school the best high school in South Dakota? And then um, US News and Report. We know we're doing good things. That doesn't mean we stand still. That means we still have to push forward. And what does that look like? And we need you. You guys are the experts. You guys are a paid internship program um, that we hope to roll out to some of you this spring. So yes, I have some students earning high school credit that are getting paid. Um, we're kind of using them to work through some things um, and then hopefully the experiences that they have and the business that they're doing with will, can share some of the successes that we have. Um, everything doesn't have to be paid. That's not what we're saying. So we do want to expand internship opportunities for our students. And the bottom line is, I want to give our students authentic educational experiences. That's key. I don't want them going to college and wasting thousands and thousands of dollars before they determine what they want to do. I think it's our job as a school district to try to get them some of those experiences before they go, to see if they like it or not. Immediate focuses, just so you're aware. Expanding our health career courses. We currently implemented Project Lead the Way this year. Our goal is in a year we're talking about some of our students getting um, CNA certified, okay, um, and EMT certified. CNA would allow a 16 year old to go work, um, whether it's at Bethany Meadows or um, any healthcare facility. Um, so whether you're gonna be a doctor or you wanna be a nurse, the CNA certification might be a great stepping stone to say, hey, I understand all of the, the field. I understand what it's like to be at an entry level position and how maybe that builds up to being a potential doctor. Um, expanding future course offerings at the high school um, to address some of the workforce needs. And that's maybe where some of you guys might come in. Um, and we want to launch Linksway Enterprises within the next year or two. It's something I've been working on with some of our teachers. Um, Linksway Enterprises is going to encompass a lot of things. Um, I envision that as we grow our um, shop area um, and our manufacturing area, that we'd have something similar to Linksway Manufacturing. I saw it in a different school district. Um, maybe we can partner with area businesses. Maybe they can donate some of their older machines to us, and students can get hands-on experiences. Um, we want to have a Linksway store at some point um, where we're selling Links gear or stuff that our students have made. Um, and then our SPED department can get integrated in on helping stock that room. And these are big picture things that aren't going to happen overnight. Okay? Um, and then we really want to expand marketing and business, whether we're having a, um, our media department create a video for your business just to practice creating it. And maybe they create something cool for you guys. Um, so what I'm really embracing is we wanna, I want to help each other. 
I want to come up with a plan where we partner together. Um, now I'm going to shift real quickly to a couple different things. How am I doing on time? Good? Okay. Um, homecoming, if you, are, if you have a storefront or a window front and you're interested in window painting, our art club would love to come paint a couple links paws um, or something at your business. Uh, just get in contact with me and I'll get you um, in contact with Mr. Nelson. Um, something new this year uh, that I really thought embraced the community idea. As we get bigger, we've got to get people into that high school, especially on the east side of Sioux Falls. How do we do it? Um, we're going to host a community breakfast at the high school on Friday of homecoming week. Something totally new. So what we're going to have is we're going to have cinnamon rolls, muffins, fruit, and milk. My goal is if uh, you know, it might be someone who just comes to a bunch of events but their kids are out of high school, maybe they want to come see what the high school looks like. Okay? Because once they're done eating, they can get a tour from our student council. I want to engage our elementary kids. Maybe they bring their parents along and come up. They can get a picture with Leo the mascot. Um, our seniors, my, I envision our seniors being available, our senior band, football, any activity, dance, volleyball, where if little kids want to go get autographs from them on that morning. Um, so I really just, it's, I think it would be a cool way to start Homecoming Friday, yeah. where our kids are serving back to you guys, and our kids, <laughs> our seniors are leading. Because I'm telling you, this group of seniors are amazing leaders. Which leads us into, how do we get to 2040 if we don't have the buildings that we need? Okay, so you might have seen the pamphlet on here, and I just want to do a quick plug for September 10th. Okay, September 10th, we're going to ask you to vote yes for our kids. Okay, what does that look like? We need to build a new elementary. Um, we're calling it Sparta Elementary. Now, is that the new? Okay, Sparta Elementary. It's going to be an 82,000 square foot building. It's going to look very similar to our last two buildings, Robert Bennis and Fred Assam. <coughs> What I'll tell you, it's practical, it's effective. Um, it takes on the Brandon Valley look, which was, I think was extremely important to us, especially when it's located, if you, I'm gonna show you a map here in a minute, on Sparta and 41st, it's located in Sioux Falls. We really wanted it to look like a Brandon Valley school. That was extremely important to us. Um, the capacity there would be about 600 students. So JK room, five sections, K through two, four sections, three or four, and that's similar to our previous buildings. Um, and then the neat thing, if you've been out to Fred Assam, that is a joint playground with the city of Sioux Falls. Um, this building would have the same thing. Um, so they partnered with us to build that playground and park. This is what it looks like, will look like. Dr. Larson, this view is from which? 41st Street looking south. 41st Street looking south. Key items that I want all of you to remember, okay? We need to accommodate growing student enrollment, current and future. And if you guys have been down to the Sparta and 41st area, hoofta, there's a lot of houses going up, okay? Um, a lot of single family homes with young kids. So we know that that's where the need is going to be. We estimate no property tax increase. Um, Robert Bennis Elementary, Paul comes out off the books at the exact same time as this one would roll on. So there'll be no increase to property taxes. And then um, we've already maximized our current facility. So a year ago, we redrew the boundary lines um, and shifted some kids from Fred Assam to Brandon Elementary. That was to get us another couple more years in Fred Assam um, before that building was over full and we were in trouble. Um, so we've, I, what I want you guys to understand is we've really been fiscally responsible maximizing our current buildings um, moving forward. Um, the timeline, Tuesday, September 10th, is the election. If we have a successful election, and what I'm going to say is you have, if you support it, um, and it's something you have to get out and vote. I think my biggest fear is everyone assumes it's going to pass because all of our bond issues have passed. Um, don't assume anything. Okay, so get out and vote. A timeline, uh, if it does pass fall 2019, winter 2020, we're going to um, construction planning. Break ground in the spring of 2020. Fall of 2020, we'll convene uh, the school boundary line committee to talk about boundary changes, because that's always going to be a hot topic. What's shifting? What, who's going to go where? Um, the previous boundary, when we redrew those, we redrew those anticipating that we didn't want to have shift to have to shift kids again 
if that makes sense. So we tried to minimize um, displacing kids into uh, different schools. And then the anticipated goal, 2021, the school opens. Just a couple additional pictures, and I know I'm running out of time, so I'm going to move this along. Here's how I want to finish up. Call to action. Okay, so this is what we need from you. Consider being a local business partner, assisting with college and career readiness for our high school students. Yeah. That may start in eighth grade. We hope in a year we have a career exploration class for our eighth graders where they're earning high school credit. So we would need the community to be involved in that. Look within your organization and consider internship and apprenticeship opportunities for our students. Don't, here's what I tell you, don't get caught up in roadblocks. There are lots of roadblocks. That's why I didn't introduce Adam Rothenberger, but he's, he's the one in charge of our um, paid internship program. We are the ones that can work on the roadblocks. I know some roadblocks is a student has to be 18 um, to work for you. Um, we can work with the Department of Ed, um, Department of Labor, to, to work through some of those details because Yankton High School has done the same thing. And they have, they've been willing to, they said, if you need our businesses to come up and meet with some of your businesses, we'll do that. Um, so we, we will do the legwork on that end. So don't worry too much about the roadblocks. Um, what we're going to ask of you, I have cards, and it has Adam's name on one side and my name on the other. Um, we'd love to do some on-site visits, have discussions with you this fall. Adam has 7th and 8th period available. I'm usually available most afternoons. If I can't go, at least I know he can go. Um, Kim might be a part of those discussions because we want to create a database of potential internships moving forward. Um, and our hope is that you have such a good experience with the internship that you might hire that high school student on for summer help if you need or anything else. And vote yes for kids on September 10th. Okay, I covered a lot. Um, but what I wanted you guys to know, we have a vision for the future. We're going to continue to focus on our core academics because we're really good at that. Um, but we're just going to enhance the experiences that our kids have. And that's my goal. Thank you.